Welcome to Every Moment His. This is a podcast where we seek to bring every aspect, every moment of our lives under the gentle authority of Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. We're glad you're here when we pray this conversation is a blessing to you. You and I, we talked about some scriptures that we think are really important in motivating us or shaping our approach to being generous. And, you know, as I thought about the scriptures I chose, I was like, oh, wow, there's another one and another one and another one. (laughs) There's tons. So we could easily spend 20, 30 episodes on this. But I, uh, let's just talk about that. Um, So... Um, tell me what what are what are just give me one text to start out that has been really foundational for you in the thinking you yeah have on this well, I do think um jesus 's parable on the mount can, mm-hmm. talks a lot about money yeah um in particular, a little further down in, in the gospel of luke there 's the parable of the rich fool mm-hmm. and it 's kind of classic you know there 's the man who has plenty. He says, what should I do? Well, I'm going to tear down my small barns, build bigger barns, lay up treasures, and just be con- content my soul, right? Say, yeah. say soul, I have everything just I relax. need. Relax. Yeah, eat, just drink, and be merry. And it's so interesting to me in that parable how strict Jesus is because it's like it's, he slams the door on that mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Uh, God comes that night and says, you fool, Mm. You know, today your soul is required of you. And who, to whom will your possessions belong? And it just, man, it really strikes to the heart of this question of mammon or this, you know, mammon's this I, money, but it's tricky. You know, money is tricky because it, it tempts us to trust in it. And it, yeah. and it can do a lot for us, right? It can do tons of things for us, but... At the end of the day, at the end of our lives, at the end of the world, um, it can't do anything for us. Mm -hmm. And so it really has, I love that passage because Jesus just really throws a glass of cold water at us and says, think carefully about, are you putting your trust in money? And is it going to matter when the day of the Lord comes or when your, your soul is required of you? Your life, you know, is required. Yeah, so, it reminds me yeah. of what Paul says. I mean, everything that Jesus says, Paul ends up saying. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or, yeah, that's true. Um, I, in fact, uh, one theologian said that uh, Paul taught and proclaimed what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I think in Paul, in, in uh, one of his letters to Timothy, he says, you know, we, we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing with that's us. That's right. And uh, it's almost like Jesus is slamming the door, throwing a cold glass of water on our American approach to like retirement. Absolutely. Meaning that I amass all this wealth and then this is just for me and I'm just going to enjoy it. Just write it out. And my family is going to enjoy it. But um, not recognizing that whatever is put in our hands is for the glory of God and the good of others. Yeah, it sounds like you might have a passage, another passage in mind. What's one that has really well, influenced you? I think first I'm going to go to the one in the Gospels from Matthew chapter 6 because it, it connects with what you said about, you know, Jesus has a lot to say about money. And so in Matthew chapter 6, in the uh, Sermon on the Mount, which you mentioned, he says in chapter six nineteen and following, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. I think Jesus is saying here what he was saying in Luke about Mm. the parable of the rich fool, that moth and rust, everything we have is going to be taken away from us. Like I like to say this at funerals that every single thing you have is going to be taken away from you when you die. Um, hmm. And and then he goes on and he says, "For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also." So the the treasure can be in heaven with Christ, or it can be here on earth, um, hmm. only to be. Taken. Consumed, yeah, yeah and devoured. so this I think this just gives some encouragement to say it well, it gets to the heart of the matter, 
because whenever we're dealing with money, we're always dealing with the heart. Yeah. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, Paul says in First Timothy 5, I think. Yeah, 5. But and godliness with contentment is great mm -hmm, gain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, uh, this, uh, this idea of the heart is really important because um, the heart directs. Hmm. It's not so much that our mind directs what we do. I think that our mind is more directed by our heart. And so the, we, we convince ourselves in our minds whatever our heart desires. Yeah. And that often has to do with money. Yeah. 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 So the treasure is in um, the new creation. You know, I'm always cautious with the word heaven, you know, but, or in Christ, mm -hmm. these things will not be destroyed. Yeah. Right. This, um, this new kingdom that's coming has no end. Right. Isaiah says about Jesus's kingdom. I think about it as yeah. investment, you know, yeah. like, think about if you were to invest in um, Tesla. Well, wait, I mean, <laughs> that's your thinking of a company. <laughs> well, I, well, that'd be an example. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, think about like if in like 1995, somebody told you to invest in a company called Google, mm -hmm. you might be like, why? Uh, but like maybe it would have been tempting in the mid 90s, early 90s to invest in a company called like Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or uh, that, Blockbuster is never going away or, in 1995. Yeah. Or Kodak. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but now, I mean. Or Kmart. <laughs> yeah, Kmart. <laughs> Technologies have changed. You know, the market's changed. And I think like investing in this world and all of its pleasures and all of its securities is kind of like investing in blockbuster <laughs> like this is yeah it's right. the hottest thing right now yeah but it's it gonna be gone <laughs> but it's gonna be gone so. yeah it's i mean jesus uh, he really is doing us a solid mm -hmm. he's like a really good investment counselor here where yeah. he's like you know look it looks like a long shot but it's a sure thing Right. Yeah. It really is. The market will have ups and downs, but eventually it'll come out as completely on top. Yeah. Well, it's almost like, you know, that movie, uh, was it the, uh, the big, the one with the market crash. Anyway, the 2008 market crash, they were, they were looking at this and there's like a couple people who saw it coming. They, they knew. And so they, they invested all this money, uh, shorting these stocks that they knew the housing, uh, bundles of financial tools that were going to collapse and everyone thought they were crazy mm. you know it's called the big short it's a good movie it's not a kid's movie but um it's about this financial collapse and mm. um s some people saw it coming they bet against it and then at the end of it they were rich but everyone else were, was poor mm. and that's kind of like what's happening it's i mean the question of money is what's really valuable, what's, what's really valuable. I almost think of it a little bit in terms of like meeting with a financial advisor. They ask you, how do you want your investments to be for retirement? Do you want yeah. them to be super risky, like <laughs> aggressive or, you know, like uh, conservative. And, you know, when we're thinking about the work of God's kingdom, faith would say, well, let's be aggressive, mm -hmm. you know, let's be, um, let's just, really go after it because yeah uh, yeah well so uh another scripture Tell sure me another one well that kind of leads me to i think one of my i think it's my favorite parable it's definitely in the top three mm -hmm. but it's the parable of the un uh the dishonest manager yeah and it's always i think it's my favorite because it perplexed me for a long time it but then I, I feel like I got some clarity on it. I love how the one-year lectionary puts it in every year. So pastors oh, yeah, just have to <laughs> figure have it to out. have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But so anyway, the, in the parable, there's a dishonest manager. And his, his boss says, I've heard you're dishonest. You're, you're fired. You're going to be fired. You can no longer be my manager. And so this, this manager goes around to all the boss's accounts and mm -hmm. basically cuts some deals, right? Yeah. If you had almost you know, all this oil, make it half. And so what he's doing is he's garnering favor with all these clients. Mm -hmm. And his hope is that when he's fired and removed from his position, he, he won't be able to have to beg. He says, I'm too, too proud to beg, too old to dig, right? Yeah. He won't do manual labor, but they will welcome him into their homes because he cut them a deal. 
Mm -hmm. And the, the owner, the boss says, good job. That was really smart. I see what you did there. Yeah, yeah. And then Man Jesus after said... my own heart. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Jesus says, you know, the sons of this world are, are more shrewd than the sons of light. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he says, and I tell you, and it would be helpful maybe to look it up, but I tell you, use unrighteous mm-hmm. wealth to gain friends so that they might welcome you into the eternal dwellings. Mm-hmm. And it very much appears that Jesus is holding up this dishonest manager as someone to follow or emulate. Yeah, right. And so the puzzle seems to be like, well, is Jesus telling us to be dishonest? And no, it's just that in the case that this man's world was ending, he did what was necessary to secure the security in the next world. Mm-hmm. And similarly with our wealth in the case that this world and everything that it has is coming to a close. Um, what do we do to secure with the resources we have now um, eternal dwellings in the life that is to come? Mm-hmm. And so who are those eternal ones that will welcome us into their dwellings? Mm. It's those who have died and are with the Lord and they welcome you. Yeah, they welcome us into, into the eternal dwelling. Eternal life. It's through your gift yeah. that they've heard the gospel. So right? he says, "I yeah, use your unrighteous wealth to gain friends." Yeah, and I think I love it so much because, and then actually Jesus says after this, uh, "If you're not going to be um, faithful with unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true wealth?" And the I think the true wealth is is people. It's souls. Yeah, right. right. If you're not going to be faithful with like this paper funny money we have, you mm-hmm. know, or this stuff that's kind of like going to be moth eaten. Yeah. Who's going to give you something that's eternal? Like um, a friend, right? Or the eternal creation of, of someone made in the image of God. Who's going to entrust mm-hmm. that to you? Mm-hmm. Which is true wealth, which is what the Lord came to seek and find, right? So I just love how the parable just really messes with your mind. (laughs) Yeah. But it, you know, it's like if you die with heaps of money, but no friends and you've won over no one for the gospel. Right. Right. Yeah. How's that feel at the end? You know, I remember I preached on that text um, the first summer I was at Holy Cross. So this would Hmm. have been like July or August of 2019. And, um, and I remember that clicking for me. And that's how I preached it, mm-hmm, actually, mm-hmm. is that, you know, you, you use your resources to win people over for Christ. Yeah. And then there's this beautiful idea of, of, of all the dots being connected in the next life of, like, your gift that you gave led to people knowing Christ. Mm-hmm. And there's that, that song, you know, thank you for giving to the Lord. And it, um it's kind of an oldie, mm-hmm. but you know, you've got like this guy, he dies and goes to heaven. And like, there's people who are like, you gave to a missionary and then I heard the gospel. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of that thing, right? It's, it's yeah. the trying to what, capture that. Yeah. Trying yeah. to capture that. So. Thanks for listening to this episode. We hope it was useful for you. If you found this particular useful, you can share this episode with friends or family. You can also subscribe to our podcast and whatever platform you're using or give us a review that really helps other people find our podcast. This is also a teaching ministry of Holy Cross in Kearney, Nebraska. And so if you do not have a church, we would love to welcome you into our community to build you up and to share the joy of salvation with you and the rest of the members here at Holy Cross.